great creator saying if we have free will and then we make bad choices and get sent to hell to get tortured, does that mean Satan is in cahoots with God? I'll let you go for it, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to think where to start with this because, yeah, I mean, we were just talking about how God provides us willpower to do what's right. Uh, that's and so God is giving us the choice, the option to lean on Him to do the good things, um, but we have to ultimate ultimately step further back and talk about what is God like. And in um, the book of First John, John says twice that God is love. And what does it really mean to be love? And if we look at if we go look at the def definition of love in First Corinthians twelve, 13. right? 13 the love chapter yeah, yeah i think it's 13 uh first corinthians 13 paul's talking about love and he just details it out love is patient love is kind well in that list also it says love trust and that's so cri cri critical to this to understand now god if he wasn't love he would be a dictator and or he would just outright make it so that we would always obey him no matter what but he does not want that because also the Bible teaches that love to truly be love has to be voluntary. It has to come from the heart. It has to be really authentic. And God wants meaningful relationships. God of love, like love and relationships, they're, they're, they're so much entwined. And so God in of itself, the Godhead, the three of them, they have a relationship with each other where they're so close, they're one. And then they wanted to expand the family, so they keep making more creation. They created the angels, then they created humans. Why? To have relationships with us. God wants to call us his sons and daughters. And as Paul explains in Galatians, like pretty much if you, uh, Galatians chapter 4, especially, I believe, if you read that, Paul talks about how, you know, maybe when we were ignorant, we don't know what we're doing, we're under the law. But God's plan was that we'll be like sons and daughters where we're free and not that the law doesn't apply to us but we're now mature and can make better decisions and can you know run the household and, and all that that's god's plan so that we'll be mature we will keep his laws by choice and he wants and that's really the everlasting covenant which is if you obey god and keep his law you will have eternal life and it's actually by necessity that is that way. Because without love, if we do anything other than love, we're going to create breaches. We're going to create inequalities. We're going to create um, circumstances where someone ends up experiencing pain and ultimately it leads to death. It always will. And that's why God cannot tolerate, tolerate uh, these things in the slightest cannot tolerate sin whatsoever. So how is God going to have a system where we have free will, but then allow for sin, and then what are you going to do with it? Now we have sin in the system. God's plan is ultimately to let everybody make a choice. Are we going to continue, continue to identify with sin, hold on to our sin, cling to it, in which case then when God is going to purge sin totally from the universe, we will have to be purged with it. Um, and Tina, what's that verse? Like, it, it will not r arise a second time. Oh, that is... We'll put an utter end. It's Old, it's old Testament. Um, yeah, it will not come again. Reflection will not arise a second time. Amos? I'll let you look at the verse. Do you mind if I address something really quick on this comment as well while you look that yeah. up? So my friend, Great Cree. Um, so another thing I think just a misconception I think you're you're having as far as what hell is as if it's a place of torture like eternal torture mm -hmm. and the thing is that's a not a biblical concept first of all Satan will not torture you in hell Satan <laughs> is there being punished as well what hell is it's a place where that was created for the devil and his angels it wasn't even created for man um you can see that in the New Testament but also um hell is not this eternal place of torture. Hell is basically, or 
like it says in the book of Revelation 21, that those who are not written in the Lamb's book of life that reject God, that say, no, I don't want God's way. I want my own way. I'm going to hold on to my sin. Then they are thrown into the lake of fire and they are consumed. They burn up. That's it. They're gone. They are annihilated. They don't sit there being tortured and burned forever. I know that's a really big misconception that many people have as far as what hell is. It's like this place where the devil is having fun torturing people forever. But that's really not the case because that's where the devil is destroyed along with sinners. And so, and that's very, very clear. Um, there are so many verses from Old Testament and New Testament. He wants Testament to purge it. Hell. Yes, exactly. And I mean, even look at John 3, 16. I think this is honestly my favorite verse to show you <laughs> that sin is, or hell is not a place of eternal torture. It's a place where you're consumed, burned up, and you're done, and you are eternally gone. Um, and that's really what hell is. It's a place to burn up, consume those who choose to side with sin rather than with Christ based on their own free will. And John 3, 16 is, you know, a very famous verse, but it says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him, Jesus, should not perish, but have everlasting life. And so that word perish, that doesn't mean to burn and be tortured forever. Perish means to perish, to be no more, to be done, to be done away with. And, you know, it, um, Romans 3, 23 says the gift of God is eternal life. It says the wages of sin is death is death, the second death, as it talks about in the book of Revelation, that when you die, or if you experience a second death, you go in the, to the lake of fire, it says this is the second death, eternal death, where you'd never get a resurrection. Um, that is the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So we again, you see the, the two choices that God clearly has for you. It's either eternal life through his son, Jesus, that you have as your choice of an opportunity to have this blessing or you choose sin and selfishness and you choose eternal death. And it's really your choice. And it's not, uh, you know, this messed up idea of God that he's like wanting you to be lost and he's in cahoots with the devil. God's not that way. And I think that the devil is really smart in trying to convince people that God has a character that, that has an evil side to him when God doesn't. God is love and God is perfect. And his way is always kind and merciful. But again, in his mercy, he cannot allow sin to continue because that will continue the suffering that sin brings with it. So anyways, and I hope we have that a comment that's mm -hmm. directly on point two from Uncle MG. Yeah. So Uncle MG says, speaking to the current question, those bad choices need not cause us to lose eternal life. First John 1 19 negates those bad choices. Exactly. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So yes, you are on point that, yeah, we don't have to be lost. Even if we've made bad choices, we can confess them and we can still have eternal life. Thank God. Because <laughs> I know we've all, I messed up and I thank God for his mercy. Um, sorry, Jay, did you want to um, say, or did you find that first? I wanted to add one thing to this also, this 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 topic and this discussion is that is the importance of surrender. That in those moments when we are tempted and we need to be present, first off, with ourselves and recognize that we are being tempted. And when we are tempted, we need to surrender that temptation to God and not pursue it. That's an essential component of overcoming any kind of sinful tendency, any kind of addiction. We have to recognize what we are doing and make an intentional, thoughtful effort to, to surrender that and to the God. And the temptation does not come from God. While mm -hmm. God permits it to happen so that we can have free choice, again, it doesn't mean God likes that. And God is endorsing it. Mm -hmm. um, so th these are things that people often conflate. And um, I guess this is a good segue to then that verse I mentioned earlier that we're going to read. And this is Nahum 1, 9. So Nahum chapter 1, verse 9, it says, What do you imagine against the Lord? He will make an utter end of it. Affliction will not rise up a second time. If you study this chapter, um, I mean, God is talking about how he will put an end to sin. Like 
thoroughly. And how do you put an end to sin? You don't put an end to sin by burning people forever and ever and ever and ever because they're still around. They're still in agony. They're still in pain. Mm -hmm. Like that's not putting an end to sin. And I, we agree. Like if God was doing that, God is as bad as Satan, but God is just going to destroy these people. He's going to put an end to the wickedness. He's going to put mm -hmm. destroy everything that came from sin, looks like sin, is sin, and it will never come back again. Mm -hmm. And those who all made a choice to live with God will have free will and there will never be sin again. So this is God's ultimate solution, his ultimate plan of how we will have free choice and we will all, those who choose to be in that system, will all abide in his amazing law of love and have an amazing society where you will be able to leave your doors open. Nobody's ever going to steal. Nobody's ever going to kill. Um, and it's going to be amazing. And there will be no more death. Because again, death comes from sin. And God Amen. never wants to see that. No. Amen. And I love all God's promises, especially Revelation 21, like three and four. Mm. You know, God says, he'll wipe away all tears from their eyes and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying. Um, no you know, for the former things have passed away. They're done. These, these ways of this world are gone.